This is an Axial Flux brushless synchronous DC motor. Well, at least that's what it ended up as. And it's the next step towards my eventual goal of making my very own e-bike motor. I first started working on this motor over a year ago at this point, and the original idea was to try to make an Axial Flux synchronous reluctance DC motor. Now, that's a lot of complicated words, so let me try to explain what they mean, why this motor has this rather weird looking construction, and after that I'll show you how I constructed it, failed, and then finally ended up with this working motor. There's a lot to cover, so let's start with the meaning of axial flux. Axial flux refers to the orientation of the magnetic field lines, or flux lines, inside the motor. While most motors produced nowadays have a radial flux construction, meaning the magnetic field lines are projected radially outwards from the axis of rotation like this, then in axial flux motors the magnetic field lines are projected parallel to the axis of rotation like this. Synchronous refers to the way the motor is controlled. If you refer back to my Axial Flux BLDC motor build, then in that case the magnetic fields generated by the motor's electromagnets worked to both push and pull on the permanent magnets in the motor. Well, in synchronous motors the electromagnets in the stator always work to pull the motor along and keep it exactly in sync with the rotation of the magnetic fields generated by the electromagnets. Just Imagine that these permanent magnets here are actually magnetic fields generated by the electromagnets. Reluctance is essentially the magnetic equivalent of resistance. In electric motor terms though, a reluctance motor essentially works because the magnetic fields generated by the electromagnets attract certain materials like iron. Once again, imagine that here the permanent magnets are actually magnetic fields produced by electromagnets. This kind of motor is notable because it uses no permanent magnets in its construction, thus making the motor cheaper to build, as well as avoid certain geopolitical risks. Now then, what's with this weird looking design? I mean, most axial flux motors, stators and rotors look like this. So what's with all this curviness? Well, it's all about magnetic field uniformity. You see, in conventional axial flux motors, the magnetic flux density in the electromagnet cores is not necessarily uniform. For example, the magnetic flux here is a fair bit lower than it is here. But to not waste space and material, I was aiming for a magnetic flux density as uniform as possible. To that end, I had to keep the distance between the copper windings and the centers of the cores constant, while still space filling the whole circular area. And indeed, there is a curve that does exactly this. This curve is called the circle involute. You have actually probably unknowingly encountered this curve before. Its use starts from simple things like involute gears or CNC tool paths, and ends with things as complex as nuclear reactor designs. Now, while this is a more optimal stator design from the perspective of magnetic field uniformity, the most optimal stator design for your use case is dependent on the winding type, the number of slots, material properties, and so on. For example, a motor with this many slots really would not benefit much from curving the cores. To make this synchronous motor, I decided to use distributed windings to compound the magnetic fields from multiple phases to generate a magnetic pole that can smoothly rotate. Check out this video from the channel Lessix for a better explanation. I also made a crude 1D simulation of the idealized surface flux density in Desmos to prove to myself that the winding I'm about to make would indeed work. For some reason though, I decided to go for this kind of winding configuration. This 
was a major mistake, as you will see later. Not only did it cause me a lot of trouble while installing the windings, it's also just generally more wasteful of space and complicates things down the line. This way of winding the stators would have been the correct way to do it. So if you are going to make a stator like this yourself, then make sure to not be a total bird brain like me. Never go full bird brain. As usual, I constructed the motor out of as many 3D printed parts as possible because, well, it's easy and convenient for this kind of prototyping. I used two cheap L608-2RS bearings as, well, bearings, some M8 washers as extra spacers, as well as M2, M3 and M4 nuts and bolts to fix everything together. The motor shaft I made from some 8mm diameter mild steel rod by simply using files and a metal saw to make the various grooves. I also installed a circlip on the shaft to prevent it from slipping out of the motor or wiggling about too much. For this motor I wanted to also add cores for the electromagnets as well as back irons for the stators. I used this unknown mild steel sheet for both of those tasks, as it had the best magnetic characteristics out of the materials I had currently at hand. The back irons were simply made of two layers of quarter disc segments glued together with this foaming, expanding gorilla glue. The core laminations though were much trickier. I cut out strips of the metal, which I then bent roughly into the circle involute shape by the use of this 3D printed die. Then I clipped away the excess and tested to see the fit. Since I had planned for 3 laminations per core, 18 cores per stator and a total of 2 stators, then, yeah, I had to make 108 of these just for the electromagnet cores. Except that wasn't it, as the reluctance rotor needed another 60 laminations. This whole process was by far the worst part about making this motor, but eventually all of the parts were made. At this point, I took a nearly year-long break from this project, until I rediscovered it this summer and decided to finalize it before moving to my new place of residence. So, I want the stator windings using 0.8mm varnished copper wire, also known as magnet wire, after which I had all the appropriate connections soldered. Except that, what in the heck are those? Well, remember this? This kind of motor is notable because it uses no permanent magnets in its construction. Yeah, turns out that was a lie. See, since this is a synchronous motor and the reluctance rotor produces no back EMF, then we need to use Hall effect sensors to signal to the electronic speed controller how to control the motor. Hall effect sensors are essentially magnet sensors, so we do need to use a couple small magnets just to trick the ESC into thinking that it is rotating a censored BLDC motor. I then connected up the motor in star or Y configuration and attempted the first motor spin. Yeah, no matter what I did, swapped the phases, adjusted the whole sensor timings, used a LiPo battery for more power, even rewired as a delta configuration, nothing seemed to work. Remember that winding mistake I made? This was a major mistake. Yeah, it took me looking at my crude simulation again to realize that one of the phases is supposed to have the current applied in reverse, which in this winding configuration simply was not happening. <laughs> 
Luckily, not a massive problem, as I made sure to leave the motor highly configurable. So I set it up correctly now and... Yeah, it still did not work. So I then figured that maybe the mass of the rotor might be too much for the ESC to attempt to spin it. So I created this wimpy, extremely light rotor. But of course, because this thin layer of metal does not really make for that much easier path for the magnetic flux to follow, then it also did not work. So yep. A third reluctance rotor design it was, and this time... Well, it's spinning, I guess. Just not very well. <laughs> well, I suppose this is a success of some sort, yay? While the ESC did manage to keep the rotor spinning, it used a lot of power. Yeah, these are pretty warm. And it was not synced properly to the rotating magnetic field of the motor, as you can maybe hear. At this point, I concluded that this motor design is flawed and just simply too bad to make a working reluctance motor. The rotor laminations probably needed to be longer, more carefully laid out and most importantly of all, the lack of proper electrical steel laminations probably meant that this motor was destined to fail from the start. But I couldn't stand to see a project completely fail like this. So, I made this. A permanent magnet rotor. For you see, the only difference between a synchronous reluctance motor and a synchronous brushless motor is whether the rotor construction uses high magnetic permeability materials or permanent magnets respectively. Simple. And, well, after a bit of fiddling, I got it to work. <laughs> it actually works pretty nicely. That's surely worth a subscription, right? Anecdotally, I'd say that this motor is roughly as powerful as the previous axial flux motor I made. If maybe with just a little bit less efficiency, but... That's still impressive, considering I used way fewer magnets in the rotor, and this motor has not an insignificant amount of core losses in the electromagnets. While I could not be bothered to measure the KV nor the power output like I did for my previous axial flux motor, I did indirectly measure the RPM of the motor. I set up a makeshift blast shield and tested out the maximum speed of the motor. I took a sound recording of the motor while filming it in slow motion, and since the sound pitch of the motor emitted is directly proportional to the speed of the motor, then I could calculate the speed of the motor at max throttle. So if 365 hertz corresponds to 20 and a quarter revolutions per second, then 2170 hertz would mean that the maximum speed of the motor was around 120 revolutions per second, or 7200 revolutions per minute. 
honestly, that's kind of scary. If any of you ever test motors that can spin this fast, then please do make sure that you are behind the blast shield like me and ideally also wear PPE. By the way, the speed of the motor suggests that the KV of the motor should be around 600. So, in the end, I'd still call this project a success, even though the reluctance motor type really just did not work out. I learned a lot and proved to myself that the stator design I came up with would probably work just fine in an e-bike motor as well. I have posted the STL files for this project on printables, but since this motor is not meant to be actually used for anything, then I will not be making assembly instructions. If you have any thoughts, ideas or questions on this project, or electric motors in general, then feel free to comment down below. I do read all the comments I receive. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you did, do consider subscribing, liking and sharing. And until the next project, always stay curious.